What are the challenges of being a teenager on kidney dialysis? Find out right now on Keeping Kids Healthy. Hello, I'm Dr. Winnie King, and I'm here in the lobby of the Children's Hospital at Montefiore in New York City. Now it's time to meet those teenagers we told you about who have had to make hospital visits part of their daily lives. These kids have chronic kidney failure, and when you're dealing with a chronic illness, your day-to-day -day schedule has to change to accommodate your treatment. That can be especially hard for a teenager. There's enough to worry about, like just fitting in with other kids without having to think about changing your diet or making regular doctor's appointments. First, let me explain what kidney failure means. Kidneys that are working properly function as filters to clean all the waste products from your system. When your kidneys stop working, that waste builds up in your body, and patients often need to be hooked up to a dialysis machine a few times a week to do the filtering for them. We dropped by the pediatric dialysis unit here at Montefiore a few days ago to meet some of the patients and see how they're working together to get through their treatment. to keep my mind busy, keep my mind off of the whole kidney thing, uh, bad kidneys, don't do your stuff equals death. I'm here three days a week for three and a half hours. You get bored, you know, sometimes you get sleepy, tired, like you want to go home instead of feeling there. The day that you do get dialysis, afterwards you feel tired, but the next day you're ready for anything. As long as you're here with your friends, you know, you chill out. You know, it's good after a while. You hardly don't think about it. Every time a new person comes in, we always explain, like, how we, we started or, like, what kind of dialysis to take, if it's good or not. When I started, he was the first one to walk up to me because I was nervous. I was, like, 12 years old anyway. He was the first one to come up to me and say he was my, wanted to be my friend. I was like, okay. You know, show, show me the ropes and everything. Told me not to be nervous. There's always people telling me I have to do it. Like my family, my friends, always telling me I have to do my dialysis. It's for my health, so I'ma do it. It's not a fun process, but you know you have to live with it. You try to, you gotta have to. You gotta deal with it. God picks certain people for this to happen to, because he know we can handle it. I ask myself every day, why? Like, it's there, it's there. It's not gonna go nowhere. I'm stuck with it for the rest of my life. As long as I do life day at a time, each day, that's about it. We're no different from anybody else, except for the health problem, and we never let it get in the way. Now let's meet some of the teens who are in that video. First of all, we have Shanice Figueroa, who is 15 years old, and she's been coming to the dialysis unit for about a year. And we have Maricela Martinez. Now, Maricela is 15, and she just started dialysis about six weeks ago, so she's pretty new to the group and hoping for a kidney transplant very soon. And we have Christopher Brown. Now, he spoke in the video about camaraderie and how it develops on the unit. And Chris has been on dialysis for about a year after having a transplant about four years ago that didn't quite work out. And we also have Kenneth Tyler. Now, Ken's been coming here for dialysis the longest, since he was about six years old. And then rounding out our group is Maya Doyle, who is the social worker on the dialysis unit. And thank you all very much for being here on the show. Um, we talked you know, just a few minutes ago about kidneys and about failure. What does it mean when you go on dialysis? In your words, what does that mean? Anybody, jump in. What does that mean? Oh, it means, in my words, Mm -hmm. It's, we on there, we get it over with, and it's done. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if you don't do it, you know you, you're gonna, it's gonna come back to you, yeah. like times two. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be up in this hospital, in the ICU, you're gonna have right. intensive care, all these tubes through you. You can just sit there for your three hours, mm -hmm. get on, get it off, and go yeah. live on your daily life like you usually do. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, when you say dialysis, what does that mean exactly? Shanice, what, is, what does the machine do? It takes the place of your kidneys, and that's everything your kidneys will be doing if they were working. Mm -hmm. It cleans the waste from your blood, yeah. since your kidneys can't do it. Mm -hmm. It just kind of cleans it out and just yeah. makes it work it again. Yeah, it removes water that you're retaining. Yeah. Now, Chris, uh, what is the, the hardest thing, do you think, about being a teenager on dialysis? 
What's the, what's the hardest part of this whole thing? Basically coming here. Having to come into the hospital? Because you guys come in, what, three times a week? Mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. And you're here at the hospital for three, sometimes four hours. That's a lot of time. More That's than, a lot of time. More than three to four hours. More than three and four hours. And so the hospital tells you what time to come. And you just come to the hospital. You go in the machines, mm. and then you get it all done. No, you don't get right on. You yo. don't you get right on. What for, happens? Sit there about an hour. You sit there for, for an hour. Why? Why does it take so long? Because people are very fidgety on the machine. So yeah. the machine's going to beep and beep and beep. Oh. The more it beeps, the longer it takes for your dialysis treatment to get done. Uh-huh. And trust me, we wait there for hours before. Really? And the longer you wait, then that means the longer you're going to be there, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a perfect process. Mm -hmm. Things mess up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now, you guys are buddies, right? Yeah. You guys are yeah. friends. How did you all get to be friends? How did it well, happen? For me and Chris, it started from Einstein mm -hmm. when I was about, what, eight or nine? Yeah. It started from Einstein. Then we came yeah. here, and then we met Shanice mm -hmm. and Maricela. Yeah. And what do you guys do for each other? What's special about your group? What do you guys say to each other? Because you know what? When you're going through something, it's sometimes hard for somebody who's not going through it to know what you're really feeling. What do you guys do for each other? Make each other laugh. We sit there most of the time with each other. Yeah. yeah. Even like if one get admitted, we always make sure we go see that person before mm -hmm. we leave. Or when we come, that's the first thing we do. And you guys do a lot of laughing. I saw you laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we make jokes. We buy candy. We share and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, was this something that the hospital did, or did you guys just do this on your own? No, we did our own. On your own? You just became friends? Yeah. yeah. So what happens if somebody gets depressed? Because, you know, I mean, everybody gets depressed, you know? And especially when you have a chronic illness like kidney failure, you're going to get depressed sometimes. That or happens. do you guys ever get depressed? I do. You that do? Happens. And what it's happens like, when you get depressed? My whole social life has went down. I yeah. don't go to school. Mm -hmm. I have a home tutor. All I see is my living room table with the tutor mm -hmm. in this hospital, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. So and so it gets you depressed. So when you're feeling down, can you like tell when somebody's down? You yeah. know, can you sort of like feel it? Like, okay, Shanice isn't quite there today, or Chris is a little down today. Can you feel yeah, we, the difference we, we between ask each that other? All the time. We Do you? ask that. And so and what happens when, you, when you're when you feeling like, say, Chris is like feeling kind of off today. What do you do to bring him around? Make him laugh. Yeah. And be like, oh, Chris. <laughs> oh, Chris. <laughs> and does it work? It makes you laugh? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Maya, what's the, what's the value of having uh, kids that are in groups going through well, this? Well, what's nice is what we have here is, is sort of unusual in that we have a unit that's just for kids mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than having kids that are out there in adult units and right. sort of scattered. And even before we sort of put anything official in place, mm -hmm. The, the kids from the beginning have sort of found each other and looked after each other. And so we've tried to build on what they've already started. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, they go to, we, they go to summer camp together mm -hmm. in the summer. You know, they, they're right. with each other at treatments all the time. Yeah, so you're um, just like a little family. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Now tell me about some of the lifestyle changes that you have to go through. Like, you guys can't just eat just anything, right? No. Marcella? I mean, what, how has your diet changed? Like, um, you miss the food that you used to eat. Uh -huh. You mean, like, Pizza, McDonald's, mm -hmm. and soda. Yeah, and that's all, all that over. Stuff. Yeah. You or you can you have a little bit and then you can't. Uh oh, you're mm -hmm. not. You can't. You can't have any. Mm -hmm. It's over. It's over. The only soda you can have is light yeah. soda. Is light soda? Light soda. Okay. Like sodas right. you can see you through clay. Yeah. Used to it. And then what about like sports and stuff like that? Can you guys play sports? You can still play yeah. sports, yeah. but yeah. can be so rough. Yeah. Like so like football. contact sports, things like yeah. that. Contact sports. Not no, why is that? Touch though. Why can't you uh, play Some contact? Some of us can. Some yeah. of us can. It depends, like, mm -hmm. what um, hookup you got, because some of us got catheters. Right. And some of us get um, needles in your arm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you got catheter, which you don't want to, um, nobody yeah. to hit. So. Mm -hmm. so you can't have it. Yeah. So how has your family dealt with this? You know, do you find that your family is very supportive, or is it really hard for them? How, how are they coping with all this? Supportive. They're supportive? How about you, Shanice? If it wasn't for my grandmother right now, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I would not be sitting here. Really? She gets me out. She says, you have to make it. You have to put one foot out, mm -hmm. no matter how bad you're feeling. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. say, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And she does and it. She, she stands there yeah. and talks to me until I get out that bed. Uh huh. That's good, though. That's great. Now, before this whole thing happened, you know, with you guys, and I know it happened at different points in your life about having kidney failure, did you guys even know what your kidneys were for? Did you even know you had kidneys? 
I did. I yeah, did. I love science, and so we, we learned about that stuff. So you already knew, but did you have any idea that your kidneys could fail and that this could happen? No. Was it something that you were That's one thing about? I didn't know. You didn't know? No. I thought they were just there to be there. Just mm -hmm. something in there. Just something there. Just the organ. Real and organs. how did you feel when you first found out? Do you remember, because you were a little boy, do you remember when it yeah. first or hit when you, first, when you fully understood? Yeah. How did you feel? I felt bugged, strained, mad. Mm -hmm. It was all the same to me because yeah. the doctor told me I had it and he, and he explained it, what it was, mm -hmm. but I still didn't understand. Yeah. And so like a couple of years later, I understood what it was. Right. So it took a little time to kick yeah. in. Maya, what, what should parents watching know about this? And we've just got a few seconds left. I'm sorry to do this to you, but what should they know about uh, their children that are on dialysis? Uh, I think the most important thing is just, you know, reaching out for information. There is a lot of information out there and learning as much about your child's particular mm -hmm. diagnosis. Right. And also to talk to other families. That's what we really try to encourage sure. here is that not only the kids meet each other, but if the parents that are coming to the unit get to meet each other, mm -hmm. especially when they're new to dialysis, right. that really sort of helps to hear someone that's Gone sure, it. fair enough. Thank you so much for that. Well, you guys are all really extraordinary people, and we're so grateful that you're here sh sharing your stories with us. It's been a true privilege. We hope all of you have enjoyed meeting this inspiring group of teens. We hope we see you next time on Keeping Kids Healthy. Bye bye, everybody.